Welcome everyone in this NPTEL online certification course on biological process design for wastewater treatment. So, in the last lecture we studied regarding the biological treatment systems which are used in the wastewater treatment. So, one of the first system which was we discussed uh, was activated sludge process which is actually a aerobic process in which the oxygen or air is used for oxidizing the organic matter present in the waste water into CO2 and H2O. For doing this we used a activated biomass which was suspended inside the reactor and then the treatment was done. In the activated sludge process the waste water which was coming from the primary treatment unit uh, is treated in a reactor and then we have a secondary clarifier where the settling uh, is done to remove the biomass and some of the biomass is returned back into the reactor so as to maintain the concentration of the active biomass at a particular concentration which is called MLVSS and most of the biomass which is actually wasted. Now that means three operations are performed the aeration was performed the during the aeration itself the treatment was performed then we have a secondary clarifier where the settling etcetera was done and after that there was a return system also. Now these systems were designed initially when the flow rates of water were less and the space was also more. So activated sludge systems require lot of space for their treatment. In between there is another technology which is which has evolved which is called as sequential batch reactor and it is used now very commonly in many of the industries. The good thing about the sequential batch reactor is that, that it requires lesser volume or space as compared to actuator sludge system and the efficiencies are as good as that. Now if you know uh, the batch if anybody is from the uh, chemical engineering background or they have the knowledge of the reactor systems. So, we have two types of reactor system basically batch reactor and continuous reactor. Now, continuous reactor may be a, a completely mixed tank reactor which is called CSTR or it may be plug flow reactor. The plug flow reactor always has better efficiency as compared to CSTR. Now, the plug flow reactor and batch reactor they have similar efficiencies. Now, if you compare batch reactor with CSTR, the batch reactor always gives better efficiency as compared to CSTR if the operations are performed in batch. So, here in the sequential batch reactor all the operations are performed in a batch mode. So, that means the efficiencies are higher. Sequential batch reactor does not mean that we have a sequence of batch reactor. Here it means that we have a batch reactor where operations are performed in sequence. So, this is called sequential batch reactor. So, essentially SBR the sequential batch reactor is a fill and draw type actuator sludge system. It is similar to actuator sludge system, but with some differences. In this system the waste water is added in a single batch reactor treated to remove the undesirable components and then discharge. So, that means we have a reactor where all the operations are performed some the waste water is coming after that the waste this flow rate is stopped then we have some time is given for the treatment of water after some time this water is also taken out and again next batch is coming. So, we have sequence of operations being performed in the same batch. The conventional activated sludge system and SBR processes are the same, but the difference between the two technologies is that the SBR performs equalization, biological treatment and the secondary clarification in the single tank using time controlled sequence. So, we have sequence of operations where equalization is being performed, biological treatment is being performed settling is being performed and then the removal of the treated water and sludge is being performed. 
equalization, aeration and clarification can all be achieved using a single batch reactor and this reactor is called SBR or sequential batch reactor. This is the usual cycle of sequential batch reactor. So, first process the water will be filled in after that some time will be given for reaction to happen that means the treatment will happen during that time. Once the treatment has been completed and desired efficiency have been achieved, the settling time will be given so that the sludge and water get separated. Then decantation time where the water will be taken out and after that some time is given depending upon the operation. So, it this idle time may or may not be there depending upon how the what are the different timings of different uh, these phases. So, what is the time for fill? what is the time for react, what is the time for settling, what is the time of decantation, then we can have ideal time also. So, this is possible. All the SBR systems have 5 steps in common which are carried out in sequence as follows. So, first is fill phase. So, wastewater flows into the reactor, mixes with the biomass already present in the reactor. So, the biomass activated biomass is already present in the reactor wastewater flows into the reactor and mixes with the same. Filling of the influent can be varied to create the following three different conditions. It is possible to vary this filling condition. Static fill, under static fill condition the effluent wastewater enters into the reactor with no mixing or aeration. Okay. And static fill is used when there is no need of nitrification or denitrification. Then we can have mixed fill. Under the condition of mixed fill, influent is mixed with the biomass present in the reactor, but aeration remains off. Okay. So, mixing is on, but aeration is not on. As there is no aeration, the anoxic conditions prevail inside the reactor. Then we can have aerated fill. In the aerated fill, both the aeration and the stirrer are switched on. So, that means, the aerobic and anoxic conditions are created inside the reactor by keeping on and off oxygen supply to the reactor. During the aerobic condition, nitrification takes place. Aerated fill can reduce the aeration time required in the reacting steps. So, if only oxidation is required, aeration can be done in the filling stage also and it will essentially reduce the time which is required for the react phase. Then the react phase depending upon the conditions applied whether it is anaerobic, anoxic, aerobic conditions, the substrate present in the wastewater are consumed by the biomass active biomass presence inside the reactor. After the react fill phase and react phase then we have a settle phase. In the settle phase after sufficient time of reaction aeration and mixing are stopped. So, that means, once the sufficient type of reaction has been achieved, aeration and mixing will be stopped. The biomass is allowed to settle from the liquid resulting in clear supernatant. So, how much time will be given depends upon the quality of biomass being produced, how much of the settling or the clear difference is required in terms of the supernatant. So, this, this is called settle phase. Then the clear supernatant which is the treated wastewater is removed from the reactor that it is decanted out. Then we have idle time. This is the time between cycles which is used to prepare the SBR for next cycle. It is also used to adjust the cycle time between SBR reactor. Also during this time the sludge wasting is also performed during this phase. So, we can perform the sludge because with every treatment the sludge may increase. So, we may have to remove the sludge after certain cycles. So, this is possible. So, SBR can be used for carbon removal or organic removal. It can be used for nitrogen removal, nutrient removal also. So, for SBR when it is used for carbon removal or organic removal, in the fill phase the influent is fed to the reactor and the volume increases. So, as the influent is fed into the reactor, the volume of liquid inside the reactor increases. After feed is completed, the reactor is left aerated. 
typically for several hours until most of the biodegradable carbon organic portion is removed. At the end of the reaction phase, the aeration and mixing are stopped and the microorganisms are allowed to settle. When settling is completed, the clarified effluent is removed and the reactor is ready for new cycle to stop. So, this is same as usual operation. So, we have influent which is coming. In the fill phase, we have aeration which is on. So, remember all these operations are being performed inside the same batch reactor. So, aeration is on. So, this is the reactor will be filled. After that, we have react phase. Again, air is on. The reaction will be carried out and the, all the organic content will be converted into CO2 H2O. After the reaction is complete and we have achieved the desired efficiency, settling time some settle phase will be there where some settling time will be gained. We will be having clear supernatant and a section where biomass is concentrated. Now, this effluent from the top is taken off, drawn off and again the some ideal time is given. It may be possible that this sludge may be wasted also and again the process repeats itself. So, this is for carbon removal. Now, for nitrogen removal, in this case the fill and the first part of the reaction phase are not aerated. The remember, the fill phase is not aerated and certain fraction of the reaction phase is also not aerated. Therefore, in these phases the microorganism consume the influent organic material using nitrate as an electron acceptor. The second part of the reaction phase is aerated, so that the microorganism can oxidize the ammonia which is formed to nitrate which is nitrification which is removed during the fill and air reaction phase of the next cycle. So, in the next cycle it will be removed. So, you have some modification is done in the nitrogen removal. So, as compared to in the carbon removal, the essential difference is that the aeration is switched off in the fill phase and the certain fraction of the reaction phase. So, this is the difference. Now, operating parameters in the SBR process, the treatment efficiency of the SBR depends upon the operating parameters as such as what is the duration of each of the phase, fill phase, react phase settle phase, draw phase, ideal phase etcetera. What is the hydraulic retention time during the treatment process? What is the organic loading that we are going to give? The sludge retention time SRT, temperature at which the operations will take place, the MLSS and the MLVSS inside the reactor that have to be maintained. For maintaining this, the sludge has to be removed after certain time the dissolved oxygen concentration that has to be maintained depending upon whether we are going for organic carbon removal or nitrogen removal etcetera. So, this is there. So, these are the important considerations and certainly the strength of wastewater is also important consideration. Remember for same efficiency desirable, the SBR can handle wastewater which is having higher strength. So, as compared to activated sludge system. So, SBRs can handle much higher strength of wastewater as compared to activated sludge process. Now, there are essential parameters that have to be determined and some of them are like what is the cycle time. The cycle time in SBR process will comprise of all the phases which are fill, react, settle, decant and idle phase. So, total cycle time can be defined like this T c is equal to T f, T r, T s, T d and T i. So, all f, r, s, d and i mean for fill, react, settle, decant and idle phase. So, this is the total cycle time which is given here. Now, moreover during the react phase organic matters nitrogen phosphorus removal may be achieved by arresting aerobic, anoxic and anaerobic conditions respectively. So, we can have aerobic conditions for organic matter removal, anoxic or anaerobic conditions for nitrogen or phosphorus removal. Therefore, these aerobic, anoxic or anaerobic time can also be found out in the react phase. So, the react phase itself can be divided into different phases. 
what is the aerobic phase, anoxic phase, anaerobic phase. So, all these can be the react T r within the cycle may be composed of different phases. Now, there is another term which is very important for SBR which is called volume exchange ratio and certainly hydraulic retention time. Due to filling and decantation phase during a cycle, SBR operates with varying volume. That means, we have the volume which is varying. So, volume exchange ratio for a cycle is defined as V f by V t, where V f is the filled volume of the waste water. That means, how much volume of waste water will be filled and decanted effluent for a cycle and then V t is the total working volume of the reactor. So, it is possible that out of the total volume only certain fraction 0 0.6, 0 0.8 fraction is being used as a volume exchange ratio. Now, HRT for a continuous system is generally defined as volume of the reactor divided by the flow rate. Now, for this case it is different for SBR systems the Q the total flow rate can be how it can be defined is the volume of the filling volume in each of the cycles. So, if we have number of cycles depending upon number of cycles. So, we can find out that in 24 hours or what is the cycle time. So, where n c is the number of cycle per day defined as n c is equal to 24 by t c. Okay. So, which is the total cycle time. So, thus and we can replace n c here and once n c is replaced here we can find out q and if q is found out we can divide the total volume by q. So, that means, the we have to find out the h r t can be found out using the equation which is given here v t by q. So, this is v t volume of the reactor is known to us, but the flow rate is v f into n c and this v f v f is known. Now, this n c is 24 by t c. So, from here we can find out and we can actually manipulate it t c can go up 1 by 24 can remain here and this is v f by v t. So, this is the total volume. So, this is actually the volume exchange ratio. So, h r t and volume exchange ratio are r this is v e r into 1 by 24. So, this is the h r t which is used for calculation in the case of S B R system. So, this is the h r t. Now, then similarly we can define the solid retention time. In the biological treatment of waste water excess sludge which is withdrawn from the reactor to control the sludge age. It is it actually helps in determining the solid retention time. SRT determines the time for which the biomass is maintained inside the reactor. So, that means, uh, already we have calculated. Now, in this case the SRT for SBR can be defined by this equation, where x is the MLSS inside the reactor with full field condition. So, when during the react phase, what is the MLSS inside the reactor? Now, x w is the MLSS in the waste stream. So, that will be wasted. It is possible that the wasting of the sludge is not done in every cycle. It, it may be done in after certain cycle or it may be done in the every cycle also. So, how much x w is the in the waste stream we are going off and what is the v w volume of the wasted sludge after certain time. So, taking 24 hour as consideration, the SRT will be determined by this. So, V t is the total volume, x is the concentration of the MLSS inside the reactor, then V w and x w are the volume and the concentration of MLSS in the waste stream. Now, we will try to solve one problem to understand this SBR process design little bit. So, we have to design a sequential batch reactor to treat 20 MLD of sewage wastewater 
for the given data which is given below. So, the influent parameter the, the sewage or the wastewater is having BOD 5 of 20 milligram per 200 milligram per liter, COD 450 milligram per liter, TSS 320, TKN 40 and the total phosphorus is 5 milligram per liter, temperature is 25 and the desired condition is that the BOD should be less than 10, COD should be less than 50, the TSS should be less than 10, the total nitrogen should be less than 5 and the total phosphorus should be less than 1 milligram per liter. So, this is the actual desirement which is there. Now, for solving this condition, we will use certain assumptions for calculation and these assumptions for designing are given here. We are assuming that we are going to have a filling period. Remember, if under these assumptions we are not able to meet the criteria, we can change these assumptions. So, that means, so filling and aeration period we are assuming to be 2 hours. After that, we are assuming that we are going to give a 0.5 hours of settling time and 0.5 hours of decantation. So, that means and there is virtually no idle time. So, if any time the some wasting of sludge has to be performed, it will be inside this. So, the total cycle time is 3 hours. Okay. So, and the, we are also assuming that we will be having 4 number of basins. So, number of since SBR remember the wastewater which is coming is being continuously generated. So, what is done is that we use a number of SBRs. So, when the filling is being done for one SBR, at least another will be in the react phase, another will be in the decant phase and once the filling has been completed and its react phase is over, the wastewater goes inside this reactor. So, that means, in the actual way, we have continuous operation which is going on. The wastewater is not being blocked. Only thing is that it is going into different reactors at different times and all the reactors are operating in a batch mode, but overall treatment is happening in a continuous mode. So, we have number of basins which are receiving the flow simultaneously at 2. So, that means, this and this both will be receiving the flow and after certain time these will be receiving the flow. Now, the number of basins which are aerated simultaneously at 2 and number of basins which are being decanted simultaneously are 2. The MLSs we are assuming in the aeration tank to be 4000 milligram per liter. So, that means an ML VSS will be 80 percent of the roughly it is 80 percent. So, ML VSS will be around 0.8 of this. So, this is there. Now, compute the, the flow to be treated. Now, we have 20 MLD of water which is to be treated. So, that means 20,000 meter cube per day and that means which is equal to 833.33 meter cube per hour. Now, since we have 4 basins, so sewage flow to each basin will be around divided by 4 to 208.33 meter cube per hour we are assuming to be 4. So, this is how the division will take place. After that, calculation of sizing of the basin. So, we have to calculate the size of the basin and the following data is used. Total volume of sewage to be treated is 20,000 meter cube per day. So, this is already there. The BOD applied to the basin is 200 milligram per liter and MLSS is 4000. So, MLVSS is 0 0.8 of 4000 that means 3200 milligram per liter. Under this condition, we are assuming that we will try to maintain the foot microorganism ratio of 0 0.12. So, the total volume will be calculated. The what is the inlet? So, inlet is Q into S0. Remember, in the what is the concentration? We can put it other way. Thus, in the influent, what is the concentration of BOD which is coming? And what is the concentration inside the reactor? For that, we know that what is the volume of the reactor? What is the biomass concentration? And since biomass concentration is known, 
using the food to microism ratio we can calculate convert it into what is the substrate concentration. So, this actually balance is being used here. So, V t reactor volume be calculated q into S 0 divided by x into food to microorganism ratio. So, 20,000 meter cube per day 200 milligram per liter divided by 3200 milligram per liter into 0.12 per day. So, milligram per liter milligram per liter goes up per day per day goes up then we have meter cube. So, this meter cube is calculated to be total volume of aerated basins that are required is 10416 meter cube. So, this is the requirement. So, volume of each tank will be divided by 4 to so 2604 meter cube. Now, if we assume the side water depth of 4.5 meter, so that means the area of each basin should be around 578.7 meter square and if the we assume them to be rectangular basins, then if we assume the length to be 25 meters, so that means the width should be 23.15 meter. So, the, these are the huge reactors which dimensions of 23 into 25 into depth of 4.5 meter. So, the this is the volume of each tank which is there. Now, we have to should give some free board reason in the basin also. So, if we give free board reason of 0.5, so the total depth will be 5 meter. So, provide 4 number of basins each of size 25 meter. 23.2 meter and 5 meter in total. So, this is the num four number of basins with such huge dimensions are required for treatment of such wastewater. Now, we have to find out the HRT of also of the basin. So, what was the volume and what is the total flow rate? So, volume is 4 into 2610 meter cube and this is being divided by 20,000 meter cube per day. So, because this is the total flow rate. So, we have a HRT of 12.5 hours which is given. So, this way we can essentially calculate some amount of uh, uh, calculation based upon the basic thing is that we have already fixed some of the parameters. It is possible that these parameters may not be good enough. So, we can change back these parameters to optimize the design of the system. So, this is also possible. So, we can always perform these calculations to calculate all these things. So, and so, there are certain advantages of SBR that we have learned. So, equalization, primary clarification in most cases, the biological treatment and secondary clarification all can be achieved in a single basin. So, this is one of the major advantage of SBR. We have operational flexibility and control because we can always change back the fill time, react time, settle time etcetera. Then we can have potential capital cost saving by eliminating the clarifiers and other equipments. So, these are the advantages of SBR. Remember, SBR also have higher efficiency because they are being operated in the batch mode. So, this is also there. What are the disadvantages of the SBR? So, a high level of sophistication as compared to conventional system, conventional actuated system is required, especially for larger systems for timing the units and control because we have to always maintain all the units properly, all the phases have to be controlled. So, that means, we have a lot of piping uh, and all these systems are required so that the flow are maintained, pumps are always in operation mode, pumps are uh, properly timed so that we have all the phases which are maintained inside the design parameters itself. Higher level of maintenance compared to conventional system is required. And that means, we have more sophisticated controls, automated switches and automated walls are required. Potential of discharge floating or settled sludge during the draw or decay phase with some SBRs configurations have been reported. 
there is potential of plugging of aeration devices during selected operating cycles depending upon the aeration system use. So, this is all our possible disadvantages. So, we have to select between advantage and disadvantage. For a smaller system certainly SBR is highly beneficial. For larger system we have to select properly that whether we have to go for activated solar system or SBR system. These are the references which have been used for preparation on this slide. You can always refer to this slide. Thank you very much.